will show you how to transfer a digitally sourced image, whether a Xerox or an inkjet image, onto a linoleum block by using a few simple tools. You will need your printed image, your lino block, a pair of scissors to cut this down and trim any extra afterwards. You'll need a small cup for water and one other spare empty cup. As you can see, I'm using old yogurt containers, just things I might have used before, nothing fancy. You'll need one paintbrush or a foam brush or some other kind of brush. I prefer a flat brush. A chip brush might work okay, but sometimes this will leave the image looking streaky. Uh, some kind of object or tool to transfer some pressure, like a wooden spoon or a bone folder. Um, and then you'll need a medium to transfer the image with. So I recommend a matte medium or gloss gel, or some people have used Mod Podge. I have not used it before, but I've also seen that this is recommended as well. So before I get to the image, I want to prepare my block. Traditionally, you might have a gray linoleum, battleship linoleum block, and I've successfully done this on those with Xerox printed, laser printed images. So this is what, if you open up the plastic on a speedball, it looks a little bit like this. And if you look at it closely, sometimes it has a little bit of a sheen left over from manufacturing. So before I begin, you don't have to do this. You might like clean off the block and make sure it's free of any extra like debris. You might just take a damp piece of paper towel and wipe it down. But I'm gonna take a piece of wet dry sandpaper and I'm gonna dip this in my water a little bit or sprinkle a little bit of water on my block and just sand it down very lightly. Just enough to maybe get rid of anything that's on that surface. And by braiding the surface very lightly, it might allow for things to adhere to it a little bit better. And so I will use paper towel and clean that off. I also recently purchased one of the linoleum blocks from Amazon that's not Speedy Carve. And I'm actually gonna do my test on this because I've never used these before. But they feel similar, they actually feel thicker than this one, which means you might be able to use both sides. So I'm gonna go ahead and sand one side that I'm gonna to use today for the demo. And you can kind of compare both sides to see how they feel. Okay, and you wanna make sure that this is completely dry. Next. I'm going to go ahead and cut out my image. If you want to be precise, you can use an X-Acto knife. I'm just going to go ahead and cut this out carefully using scissors. Uh, some people I know will leave a little extra space on the sides. I do this if I'm, I'm gluing down a Xerox laser copy with laser toner because I can paint directly on that. This is an inkjet print, which I'm trying out today. I have heard mixed results with this. So I printed this image out the same size as my block, 4x6, which is a relatively standard size. So I'm going to kind of line that up with my block and compare. So it's just slightly larger, but I'm not too concerned. I would be more concerned if I had multiple layers or of color for the same image. I'd want them all to be precise and I want the block to line up perfectly. So this is just a transfer technique. This will not be the end of our image. Once we transfer this, this image will act as our guide on this. Okay. So the next thing I'll do is I'll go ahead and get out my, I'm going to try the gloss gel. Uh, this is a little bit old, as in I've had this around for, oh, I don't know, I want to say 
at least since 2013 and then somebody else had given it to me because they had had it for a long time so it's a little I think it would be best to use fresher stuff I probably don't even need this much but I'm gonna go ahead and just put it in my cup and it's a little thick because it's so old so I'm just gonna add a little bit of water and actually if I had a spray bottle I would just spritz it a couple times so I'm just gonna a little bit of water you don't want a lot of water just enough to make it easier to paint with so I'm trying to just mix it so that it becomes even I might use a little bit more I also want to be able to paint it very thin I'm actually not going to apply a thick oops amount onto my block So this method is excellent for images, vector images, things that are very complicated that you might not want to take the time to hand trace onto the block. Of course, if you would rather just hand draw or if you have something from a sketchbook, you can see my other videos on other ways to transfer an image. Okay, almost there. I think it's starting to be a little bit more pliable. I'm going to add a little more, a couple more drops. Now, I'm trying not to get my image wet because this is an inkjet. If you get this wet, it will just start to bleed immediately. So for this process, transferring an inkjet image, I would not recommend uh, getting this wet. Uh, usually if I have a Xerox toner, I will put a layer of the gel on the block as well as a layer directly on the paper and then put one on top of the other. Alright, so I feel like this is more like yogurty, I guess, or icing. Fresh icing, not cold icing. <laughs> Almost like mayonnaise. So I'm going to go ahead and use this brush. I'm going to just moisten this a little bit. Dry off the excess. And I'm going to start applying this to my block. It looks a little white now, but it will dry clear. And I'm just applying a consistent but relatively thin layer. I want this to be covering the entire block and not be super streaky. It is a little streaky for my liking. If you put it on too thick, it might peel off because this isn't really um, an the surface doesn't absorb a lot, so you'll have to be very careful. This method almost works a lot better on wood cuts and wood grains because um, some of this would be absorbed into the wood. But I usually like the appearance of wood grain, so I personally do not do this with my wood blocks because it would fill in. So, so if you want a smooth looking wood block, you can do this on that as well. All right, so now that I have extras, I'm gonna just wipe up. So I think I've gotten even application on the block. I'm going to wipe the extras off the edges which you can do afterward, but I'm just gonna go ahead and do this now. this up. Smooth out some of those thicker globs. Okay. All right. And then very carefully, you want to hover this over, line up one corner with the other corner, and set this down. And 
if I had a bone folder, maybe I can use the back of this. Oh, I wipe, I used that to wipe the edges. Ugh. Okay. <laughs> Alright, I'm just gonna use the handle and kind of press it down. I don't wanna I just am doing this or using a bone folder to get rid of any possible wrinkles and just kind of apply smooth firm pressure. Again, because it's inkjet, I don't want to risk spreading it or being too finicky with it. But right now, once I do that, you can put several books or I'm going to put some wood blocks, flat things right on top of this to give it some weight. And I recommend if you have books that you cover it with newsprint or a sheet of freezer paper or parchment paper so that you don't get any glue on any important books. And make sure if you do fold paper over that it doesn't like cut off in the middle of the block. Make sure to cover that whole block. So I'm going to just turn this around, set this here, and oh geez, okay. So I just got my block wet because I spilt my water. This might affect the image. Just blot it. Just don't try to be finicky with it or anything like that. It might bleed in that area. Put something flat and heavy right on top of it. If you see that it's wiggling, that means it's not evenly sitting on your block. So just make sure to have it somewhere where maybe there's not like a, a lip interfering. And let this sit. Um, if you were using Mod Podge or PVA glue, you want to wash out your brush in hot water. If you're using any of the acrylic, um, lukewarm to cold water will do just fine. And so you want to make sure to clean out your brush as soon as possible before anything dries. Okay, so this is my block. I've let my printout uh, that I adhered with the gloss gel medium dry and underweight of a book for about 24 hours or overnight. And so I'm going to carefully remove the paper off with a moistened sponge or something like a toothbrush. I want to be very careful about this because it is pretty easy to accidentally start to peel up that medium. So what we're trying to do is get rid of the paper but not lift up that gel medium that we applied. So I'm going to go start at one point, or I might just go over the whole thing with a little bit of water. And what the hope is, is that the ink absorbed into that gel medium and transferred a little bit. So sometimes if you have the kind of sponge with an abrasive, I might start with it, but I'm, I get kind of nervous with that. This is my first time using an inkjet print for this. I've tested this with laser prints and it works. I am a little nervous because usually with the addition of water, it'll make the ink bleed, but I'm thinking because it's transferred into that medium that it won't spread like it would on paper, which usually has a grain to it. And so far it looks like it's working. Although I can see where it's, well I'd say it's coming up a little bit, but actually I think that's part of the, the image.
So you can see some of it is starting to come up where I think I applied the, the gel medium kind of a not well <laughs> or it was a little streaky. It's almost like the brush strokes that I used. Um, so when if you see something like that starting to happen, just like let up a little bit. So you want to be constantly looking at um, your block just to see if that's coming up a little bit. So yes, I would avoid using the abrasive side of any um, things. And of course I have lost some detail. Um, what I'll do now is I will wait for this to dry before I start carving again. And you know, once you're mostly looking to be able to see that image on the block, so removing that thicker layer of paper that, and at this point I'm able to see. So I will let that dry and then comes the fun and kind of interpretive part of this, especially with this kind of photographic based image where I'll have to use my mark making to like give that illusion of a change in value for turning this into a, a lino cut print. So you're not done yet, but uh, this type of transfer method also works great for working on wood, MDF, and other kinds of boards. And I was a little nervous about this with being a linoleum because it's not as absorbent as wood, but it's, it, you could see where there's some issues, but um, if you're careful about this, that's good. If you want to speed up the dry, you can use a hair dryer um, or a heat tool, but I would always wait for it to be completely dry because uh, if it's still damp or wet, that can make your tools duller faster. All right, I'm going to clean this up and wait for this to dry before I move forward with this image. Technically speaking, this is very similar to the process that Japanese woodblock artists would use. They would actually paste their drawings directly onto a woodblock and carve right into it with that layer of paper on top. Although with that, their paper is very thin and almost translucent, and so it didn't dull their blades nearly as fast as, say, our computer paper could. We will try cutting into this and see whether this gel medium will be affected by that. I also wonder if these are streaky areas. I don't know if it was thinner there or if in fact actually maybe some of the gel medium was actually thicker and thus maybe not maybe dry all the way or was able to come up faster. So feeling it, it's hard to tell, but it actually might have been thicker in these spots that came up. So you don't want to over apply, but you also don't want to like leave gaps on the surface as well. So can't wait to start on the next part.